When we say the words treatment etiquette, what we're talking about are the general ways of conducting a treatment in the most respectful way. This is both for our clients and also for ourselves. It's important that we consider this. There's a lot of different people out there, each with their own backgrounds and stories. Not everybody loves being touched and not everybody has experienced physical treatments before. Perhaps they're nervous or outright scared. Most of the clients coming to see you will have been injured or are currently in pain and you're literally about to touch and work on the most vulnerable parts of them. This needs to be respected and trust is very important. How we conduct ourselves gives off both verbal and nonverbal cues to our clients. And when we do things the right way, the most respectful way, it often helps to build trust and allows the client to relax. Of course, this is what's going to help us create the best treatment outcomes. So what does it look like to have proper treatment etiquette? It looks like talking and explaining. It looks like draping correctly and using barriers to keep everybody safe and clean and ensure no unnecessary contact is had between the client's body and the therapist's body. Explaining to our client exactly what's about to happen every step along the way, whether it's small or big, gives them a chance to mentally prepare and then that helps them physically prepare. In this class, I really want you all to be practicing this. I remember being in school and our teachers really drilled it into us how important it was to talk to that person who likely is face down on the table. They can't see what's happening. So the more information you tell them, the better everything is gonna go. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about our mechanics as therapists. Throughout our careers, our mechanics are going to be essential to how long that career lasts for us. Do not sacrifice yourself or your body for your work, okay? Your back is more important than the client's back. Your body has to last all day. And if you give too much, what's gonna be left over for you? I like to think of it this way. If I'm the source and people are coming to see me for help, and I'm slowly hurting myself a little bit every single day, eventually I won't be able to help anybody at all. So my mechanics are very important to me. The more I take care of myself, the more I can then take care of others. After all of this training and investment in my career, I'm not gonna mess it up by doing something dumb, like throwing out my back for a stupid position that I got myself into. Be smart. If something doesn't feel right, change it, move around. Clients love to see that kind of stuff too. They're watching you all the time. They see how much you bend over. They see you lift something appropriately or inappropriately. Are you practicing what you preach with having good mechanics, right? Okay class, now we're into the very, very fun part. Let's have a look at the basic techniques that we'll be using. So the technique that I like to teach right off the bat is rocking, okay? It's very simple, but very versatile. It gives me a lot of information in a very short amount of time, and it's perfect for introducing touch to the body, and it helps to generally assess just how the client is doing, if there's any defense mechanisms triggered, or if that person is just melting right on the table, okay? So what I like to do is put one hand at the top of the spine in between the shoulders, but kind of grasping the neck slightly. And my bottom hand is right at the bottom of the spine engaged with the sacrum, okay? Simultaneously, you just add a slight amount of movement, that slight amount of rocking back and forth, just like this. I'm not working against the body. I'm working with the body. And as we go, Watch as my hand slides up the back here. I'm just looking for as much information as possible, okay? So am I touching anywhere that then she's defending against? Is everything just completely mobile and everything is super healthy? There's no restriction, okay? Rocking can be very gentle like this. It can be very strong. And even when it's really strong, I'm still working with the body it's just a little stronger, okay? 
I can even bring this down and I can do a slight amount of rocking with her arm, okay? Sometimes when you get to work on somebody, they start to tense up their shoulder, they tense up their arm, and sometimes this little bit of stimulus just helps to trigger everything to relax, okay? So that's my very favorite move right there, okay? So let's just suppose that as soon as I started touching Kelsey here, as soon as I started to introduce movement, she did start to defend and she did really tense up and I could tell that she's just very uncomfortable. So I'm gonna take my hands away. I'm gonna ask her how she's doing. I'm gonna gently put my hands back. I'm gonna reassess, okay? Maybe my rocking looks super teeny tiny if you can see this, okay? I'm gonna check in. Kelsey, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Perfect, okay, great. So now we're gonna move on to effleurage. So I like to use a massage product when we're doing effleurage. You don't have to. The goal with effleurage is to introduce a new type of touch to the body, okay? For the purposes of this video, I'm working a little bit more cross-bodied. The majority of the time, I'm going to work on my own side. That way, my mechanics are really set, okay? So if she, uh, if she was wearing clothes, you can still perform effleurage. It would just be over the clothes, okay? You're not gonna use any massage product for that, obviously, and you're just gonna be very gentle. You're almost just going to skim over the skin, creating a little bit of mount, creating a little bit of fluid flush as you go, okay? Now I'm going to add a little bit of massage cream, okay? I'm not gonna go crazy with the cream, right? A little bit in my hands, as you can see right there, just enough to get the job done. If I need more, I could always add more, but if I have too much, it's usually more of a hindrance than anything else, okay? So I'm just nicely going to spread that all over, just like so, okay? So with effleurage, we use it as an introductory stroke, but we also use it in the middle of a treatment. Let's say we've done a deeper pressure type of stroke, and now we want to increase the flush in that body part, and so we're going to do things like effleurage, okay? And Although effleurage is best done when you're pulling everything into the heart to help with that venous flow, effleurage, because it's light enough, can be done in any direction, okay? The biggest thing you wanna remember with effleurage is that it's usually on the gentler side. We usually use it to help to calm things down, introduce touch, smooth things out, whether it's at the beginning of a treatment or at the end of a treatment, okay? So now here we are getting into some petrissage techniques. Petrissage is sort of the bread and butter of massage. It's these techniques that seem to be the most commonly used and they create a lot of variety when we change them up by mixing up our pressure and our direction. We can really get a feel for how tight or how loose the muscles are with these techniques, okay? So here's kneading. This is palmer kneading. See the small circles I'm creating going down the back. Watch me here. This is thumb kneading to fingertip kneading to palmer kneading. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. So here's fingertip kneading Okay, we're getting right into her infraspinatus here. Now here's thumb kneading. Okay. I'm gonna double up my thumbs if I'm wanting to use a little bit more pressure. I'm gonna protect my thumb with this type of technique. And now again, here's some palmer kneading. Okay. Okay. So watch me as I transition into what we call open C's, okay? So do you see how my thumbs and my fingers are really working together here? Good. 
Open C's can also be called picking up or squeezing. Doing some picking up, okay, and some squeezing, just like this. My fingers and thumbs are squeezing this tissue together, okay? Now here I am showing you some skin rolling, okay? This is a more specific version of picking up, obviously targeting the skin. This is ideal for releasing superficial general restriction in between the skin and its underlying tissues. Skin rolling like this is also fantastic for doing scar tissue work, which we'll see later in these videos. Now let me show you what ringing looks like. So we're gonna ring her traps here. So again, my fingers and thumbs are working together. I have her traps and I'm just ringing gently from side to side, just like so, okay? So still a version of open C's, just a little bit different. And of course, here I am now using effleurage to make sure things are nice and calm down. I'm helping things smooth themselves out and helping the body organize itself after all that movement just happened, okay? So now here's compressions. This is a great technique, also very versatile. We did this a little bit when we were doing rocking earlier. With a true compression, it's certainly more of a straight up and down type motion, okay? We like to go slow. Tissue response is really gonna be our best friend here. So here now we're transitioning into tracking, okay? So here, I'm using my fingertips to go down Kelsey's back. And notice how I'm doubling up my fingers because fingers are not very strong compared to muscles in the back. So I wanna make sure that my tool is protected. Tracking is also known as stripping. That's what I typically call it, okay? So because we're on the back, I'm gonna change up my tool and I'm gonna use my forearm and my elbow because that's where I'm stronger. And our fingers are really no match to back muscles. So here I'm going to sink in appropriately. I'm really grabbing with my elbow and I'm stripping up the back, nice and slow, pausing at the appropriate moments to allow that tissue to catch up with me I'm not using an overly deep pressure. I would say medium, soft to medium. Okay, so now I wanna go back the other way. So I'm sinking in and I'm pulling back down those paraspinals. Now, do you see my bottom hand here is supporting my elbow? So I want that both for me and for her. This helps me not to lose track of my elbow and bump into her spine. And you see what I'm doing? I just caught myself. I'm doing a little bit of compressions as I'm going down the back with tracking. Okay, so that's a way we can use two techniques together. Okay. We're gonna be going over that a lot in class, how to change up our tool in the moment to do what's best for our bodies and for their bodies, okay? So here, just very naturally, you see me doing effleurage again to flush things out. So this is cupping right here. I have that cup type of position with my hand, okay? You can hear it. This is hacking with loose fingers. Now cupping and hacking, these are types of tapotement techniques. And to be totally honest, I rarely use these types of techniques outside of a sports environment. These are really great for waking up the muscles. Here I am doing a sort of beating technique with very loose fists still. I can do it with a firmer fist. Obviously we're gonna stay away from any bony prominences. We're not gonna do this right on the spine. 
We're gonna do this in the beefy part of the muscle. 